We need, we need some masala. Is what is the biggest seller, that's what people buy. So we came up with a package design that worked for that and then it just had a vertical face and it, the reason we call it the package design is because it was so simple that we could just uh, we could we could provide a kit almost that people could just put it together and we could make components so we were aiming at you know making this more user friendly because these buildings these older ones had a lot of strange details that were required more skill so we were trying to take it so that you could just assemble this building and they worked pretty good we did a lot of them and then we added a double greenhouse to it and then we got rid of the sloped roof because uh, we decided to, we could heat the roof with solar rather than having to have it shaped to face the sun. And so the package then evolved into a double greenhouse package and that evolved into what we call the global earthship and we've got a lot of these going around the world now. And we can do one of these like we just came back from Miles City uh, where in Montana, where we put one up in uh, eight weeks, totally turnkey, everything working, uh, two bedroom. And so we got the time down, we've got it to the point where this is a product now that we're ready to take out there. Uh, it does, it, there, there are six points to these buildings, most of which, half of which at least, I'm going into tomorrow, but they are uh, built where, you know, we're, we're, everybody's looking at uh, uh, carbon zero these days. And uh, so building with recycled materials is a, is a huge thing. That's, that's part of the rationale for using tires, but not the only rationale for sure. And the cans and the bottles. We were doing that before we were doing anything. And uh, building buildings out of cans just because uh, they started, the media started screaming about garbage being thrown everywhere and 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and they, it has, hasn't stopped. So that caused, we were doing that then before the word was, recycling was even a word. So it does, in terms of a carbon zero building, if you're using a material like tires or bottles or cans that uh, is taking the place of a manufactured material and that, manu that manufactured material takes energy to manufacture it, you're starting off with a material that doesn't have to be manufactured. There's a double thing there. It also takes energy to do something with the cans and tires and bottles. So you are getting rid of that energy because you're using them rather than using the energy to get rid of them. I was in Norway recently and they, they have a giant recycling company but it's just like the energy that is used to recycle all these materials is unbelievable, really. And then they ship them somewhere. So shipping, you're taking the place of shipping because you're using a product that's laying around. You're taking the place of manufacturing because you're using a product that's already manufactured. And you're taking the place of disposing of garbage because you're using garbage. So there's three ways that these buildings start off with a, actually a negative carbon footprint. When you're, when you're going out there and pounding dirt into tires. So it starts off with a negative carbon footprint because of uh, building with recycled materials. Then uh, uh, thermal solar, which is what I've just been talking about, uh, heating and cooling. And uh, that's, these, are the, these are the major points of these buildings. Uh, thermal solar, heating and cooling, building with recycled materials, and then uh, and so the, the design of the buildings is, is a result of what it takes to use recycled materials and what it takes to achieve thermal solar heating and cooling. And you can see how it's evolved. And then uh, uh, solar and wind energy, of course, which we'll go into tomorrow. Ha uh, water from the sky, harvesting water. And... Uh, then uh, contained on-site sewage treatment. Contained uh, sewage treatment. And so this is getting you off of the grids. And, uh, you know, sewage treatment is beginning to be a big deal because uh, 
it's all going, you know, they kind of halfway treat it in sewage <coughs> treatment plants, which again takes a, shit, a lot of energy. <laughs> and uh, no pun intended there. Uh, so it takes a lot of energy to treat sewage, and sewage is a valuable thing. Sewage to me is gold, you know. It's uh, compost, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's providing energy for food, which is the sixth point, uh, food production. So if we can make a building that addresses all of these issues, uh, you know, who needs the government? Uh, only to uh, hinder us from doing it. Yeah? Isn't it also regreen because the black water plants grow that wouldn't normally grow in the... Yeah, like, in, and you'll see, I don't know if Kirsten had in the slideshow, but uh, uh, if you get to see some of the older earthships, there's a, I have a great picture in, in a, one of my shows that shows one of the buildings here, and you know, you've got the barren, deserty mesa, and uh, it might even be in one of these uh, posters, but his, his Blackwater system, which I'll go into tomorrow how they work, has just gone off. It's like a big oasis of green with birds and owls and creatures living there, and then you see the periphery, all the barren uh, Mesa desert. And so, yeah, these buildings actually cause green to happen. So, and, and that's because they don't throw their sewage away. That's because the sewage is gold. The sewage can give you uh, a green surrounding. So, <coughs> the, the re-greening of it is definitely an issue. But if you're dealing with, so, we're, you know, it, just think of this in terms of the issues in the cities and other countries. Uh, how, much, how much of a garbage problem there is. You know, New York City's taking it out in barges and dumping it in the ocean. Uh, it's being everywhere I go, the first thing they do is they take me to the dump, you know. Uh, and there's mountains of tires and bottles and piles of refrigerators and ranges and things like that. And we've got ways to use all of that. I, I imagine Kirsten showed you how we use the, the washing machine refrigerator panels. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's new in the last four or so years. The, I was in Hawaii and they teaching, I mean, talking to a, a grade school kids. Uh, and they took me to the dump, of course. And on, uh, it was the little island, Makalaya, Molokai. And uh, they took me to the dump. And there's where I first got this idea was they, I've seen this before, but there was a big mountain of refrigerators, ranges, washing machines, you know, appliances that went, went bad. And I was, we, we had been switching, and I'll go into this tomorrow, our roof material to metal because metal catches cleaner water. And this mountain of washing machines, you know, they're all full of these baked on enamel yellow and green panels of, of uh, uh, metal and nice colors and everything. So we, after I came home from that trip, we went to our dump and there was sure enough a mountain of refrigerators and ranges. So the crew went out there, we took a solar uh, array and, uh, and a solar trailer so we could plug in these electric snippers and like if this is a panel on a washing machine, you just stab the corner of it, make a hole, take the electric snippers and snip them in there and you've got a panel. So we just go to the dump and harvest metal You'll see it on when you go to Corner Cottage has got some of it across the street. Uh, the New Global has some of it, and the Phoenix has got the best application of it. It's like artwork there. As a matter of fact, I just got a, uh, a new 1970-something uh, Mercedes that was all beat up, and we patched up the body with uh, washing machine parts. <laughs> it's fucking it's beautiful. Uh, so... Uh, Swatches, you know, that you yeah. Find at the paint store. yeah, yeah, it's great. And then uh, we found a couple of pink ones here and there, and we really like the pink, so uh, <laughs> we uh, paint some of the panels pink with metal paint. But uh, but anyway, we're harvesting metal now out of the dump for roofing, and uh, so every city, uh, every city and country has uh, serious issues with garbage, and in terms of 
what to do with it. And then when they do something like Norway does with it, to me, that was scary. I mean, they had, they had a factory of machines chewing up energy and tr trucks hauling it off to other parts of the world and whatever. To me, that was, that was insane. I mean, uh, they were thought it was a great thing that they, were do they had such a giant recycling situation, but I was just seeing energy used like crazy to recycle. All we're doing is gathering stuff from the dump, bottles, cans, tires, cardboard, washing machine parts, and we'll continue to find other goodies. Uh, so building with recycled materials is not just like a, it's a logical thing. There's really good materials, and in fact, I can't find, manufactured or not, a better material than tires to build with. If somebody gave me $30 million and said, develop the best uh, form, uh, the, develop the best ma building material you can find, I'd probably invent a tire. <laughs> so it's like, a, it's like a super relevant issue that aside from housing or anything, every city is dealing with. Well, then, of course, the energy consumed to heat and cool homes they, everybody probably knows that the carbon, the CO2, uh, I think they argue, but between 30 and 50 percent of the CO2 impact is from buildings. And that's obviously largely from heating and cooling buildings. And so if you're heating and cooling buildings with thermal solar and trying to come up with little tricks to extend that, which we're doing, then you're affecting that issue that every country and city is facing. Solar and wind for the electricity, which again is affecting, if you're, if you're replacing a coal-fired power plant or a nuclear power plant or whatever, then you're certainly affecting, like when we were in Normandy, France doing one of these, uh, they were getting ready to do two things in the neighboring area. Uh, and they were actually putting up signs and people marching and raising hell about it. Uh, one is they were going to do a new landfill uh, for garbage, and here we are building a building out of garbage. And two is they were getting ready to, to, they were running, they were condemning a bunch of farms in Normandy, France, to run the big power lines down to the south of France from a nuclear power plant. And we were building a building that didn't need power. And so it caused a lot of commotion. There were 2,000 people there at the building the last day that we worked, and, and it caused a lot of... Uh, it caused a lot of commotion, really. Uh, they also took our crew down to, in paddy wagons, down to the police station, too. I ended up having to go to court there. Uh, pretty much everywhere we get in trouble. But uh, then uh, harvesting water. Water is, you know, they say, a lot of people say the next world wars will be fought over water. Uh, if you get seven inches or more of water, precipitation annually. These systems work. I go into that more thoroughly tomorrow. Uh, contained sewage, obviously uh, that's a serious issue everywhere. It's either going into the, up in Colorado, there are so many developments all around Colorado Springs and Pueblo and Denver and everything that, uh, you know, housing built on half and three quarter acre lots uh, some of them have septic tanks and you basically, some of the people have told me they walk out their back door and the ground goes squish under their feet because there's just so much. A, a, a serious example is uh, a development in uh, California somewhere, San, I forget where it is, Southern California. They were, it's an existing development and they're getting fined millions of dollars a year because it's a, several thousand homes that are, that's near the ocean, and uh, so the homes are all sucking water out of the aquifer, which is creating a vacuum that's sucking in salt water and contaminating the aquifer of their wells with salt water, and then on top of that, they're putting sewage down it anyway. And so they're, they're without water and sewage and getting fined until they fix it, and they, they were going to get our systems set up there. Uh, they're still going through the bureaucracy to try and do it, and that's the big issue these days is getting permission for these things. And then the next thing that is starting to be uh, an issue is food. Uh, we're seeing, you know, we're producing, this is token here in this building. 
This is an old building. But the Phoenix, if you, you'll get to see it on the tour, and some of the other buildings are more, we're, we're, but the Phoenix is really our effort to illustrate what you can produce in terms of food. Due to your treatment of sewage, due to your buffer zone, uh, we're starting to produce food. And the Phoenix has got, we're taking it to what used to be called extremes, well now it's just the logical next step in my mind. The food production at the Phoenix is, uh, I think three or four days ago, we went over there and dropped a line in the tilapia pool, caught a fish, cleaned it, skinned it, fried it, uh, uh, gathered some lettuce and tomatoes and peppers and other goodies from growing in the Phoenix and had a great meal. So we can, and we got lots of tilapia there now. Uh, so we are now getting to the point where the, our objective with the Phoenix is that uh, a family of four could stay alive without anything. So when you put all of this together, we're talking about, uh, it, it, these, are, these are six food and, and sewage and water and energy and, and garbage are issues that every city in the world is facing. And we're, I'm not saying we're the solution. What we're saying is we're addressing each one of these issues uh, sort of in, a, in one blow called housing, you know. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's working. We've been, we've been playing with it now for decades and keep evolving it and so on. And it's, it's like a dichotomy or something because we're seeing that this works and, and we're seeing that we can make it affordable and we can teach people how to do it. And you know, you're, what you should do coming to these seminars and being interns and whatever is I'm trying to illustrate the, the, the core thinking of this so that, you, uh, so that you know why these things are, they're, they're not really some architect's designs. They are, we're finding treasure almost here. And that's <laughs>